Hey there, good morning to you all. Hope you all are doing great. My name is Path Varu and I'm the event and the program manager for Microsoft Reactor at Bangalore. So before we start our today's session, let's go through our code of conduct. We are all here to learn together. So please be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, being kind and considerate in a way we all engage. Yes, we do encourage you all to participate. Please drop in all your questions in the chat section and uh, we would like to take up from there. Now, I would like to bring in the guest for our today's session. That's Ashish from Elastic. Hey, Ashish, how are you doing? Hey, Parth. Hi. Uh, first of all, good morning. And I'm doing good. Thanks for having me today. Yep. So what's like morning in Mumbai? Ah, uh, it, it's um, okay. What up uh, or Banmaska? <laughs> um, it was, it is a bit, bit cloudy and uh, the rain, see, rainy season is going on. So of course with chai and of course Banmaska, whatever you pick, man, it's always good in the rainy season in Mumbai. So yes. <laughs> yeah. So in Bangalore, we have like the espresso and idli vada masala dosa mm. the filter filter coffee uh, filter coffee yep yes that, that's great oh, when was your last visit to bangalore ashish last we haven't week met, like we haven't met it's been long time yes yeah. yes so we, i i visited last week only we uh, we had a meetup over there but uh, yes in the reactor it's been a long time uh, we we did a meetup or we collaborated so of course i'm looking for to do it for sure, in coming future, yeah. we'll meet again at Reactor. And Ashish, a small intro about you, and the floor is all yours. Sure. Uh, okay. So, um, should I should I get start or yeah? Yep. Introduction. Okay. Cool. So, folks, good morning, and thanks for having me. So, my name is Ashish. I am a DevNel. Okay, I'm DevNel uh, working at Elastic. So I mostly um, uh, I mostly handle the community in India. So um, helping people, helping developers, uh, having an eight plus years of experience uh, collectively. Started my journey as a software engineer, then uh, got a chance to work as a solution architect, technical architect. Uh, also, I had a I had a startup, and I was there for two years. I got. A, uh, multiple opportunity to work in a different roles as a startup guy, as you know. So as a founder, you have to work on uh, marketing, support, tech, engineering, infra, everything. So yes, uh, I, I got exposure to learn lots of things in um, different areas. So um, yes, I joined the Elastic uh, one and a half year back and it's, it's going wonderful. So yes, I think uh, today we're going to, uh, today we are going to learn how you can do the vector search and to be more specific, the hybrid search with the elastic search, right? So mostly this session, we're going to focus on a semantic search. Okay. Nowadays we are doing, let's say we are, we are searching anything on a search box. It's, it's mostly the keyword specific or keyword matching, uh, kind of search. It's, it's kind of like query, but, um, uh, today we are going to see how, how the semantic exactly works, right? So. Let's start with the today's session, guys, and feel free to uh, comment out all your questions. I'm happy to answer on live, or if, if you miss this video, feel free to ping me on my social handles. I would like to answer everything, yeah. So I'm sharing my deck. Uh, Art, if you can just confirm it's, it's visible, right? Yep, yep, it's visible. Okay, cool. So uh, as of now, you know, the Elasticsearch is uh, already the proven proven search engine for, you know, the, for the search. You, if you have any kind of use case around the search or any, any use case, you, you blindly attend, uh, give, give a try to the Elasticsearch, right? Uh, before getting started, let's, let, let me give you the, the bird eye view. What is, what is Elastic? What we are offering? What is Elastic stack, right? And it, it will be too short. I, I won't take much time. But if you have any question related to any of this component, feel free to uh, feel free to question in, into the comment, right? So uh, yeah. So Elastic is a started with the Elastic Stacks, which is the which is also known as the ELK stack, right? Uh, the Elastic Search, Kibana, and there is a third component called 
this is an indication part. So let's let's talk about the Elasticsearch first. So Elasticsearch is um, a search engine and analytical engine, you can say. Some people are using as a data store as well, correct? So just you uh, keep your indexing off and you just, you can leverage the Elasticsearch for a data store, right? Uh, Elasticsearch is a NoSQL uh, data store. So uh, any, any data you have presented into the JSON, feel free to dump into the Elasticsearch and your data will be get ready to, for a search within a second, right? Uh, on the top of it, Elasticsearch also like provide the full text search query, correct? So when I say the full text search, it's not like a, like a fixed length search. It, it is like a like query. I, I'm, it's it's kind of like query with the wildcard, right? So when whenever you do the Google search or kind of this, this all things are working on a full text search. So if you have if you want to build the search engine around your data, feel free to your feel free to dump your data into Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch is is uh, give the multiple types of uh, uh, what we can say, but data types. It's, it's uh, support. Let's say a uh, textual, uh, numeric characters or uh, geo geospatial data types so if you have uh, if you are building some uh, any any um, application around the geospatial geospatial specific so and you have a uh, data in the format of lat lang latitude longitude so feel free to uh, enter into elastic search and on the top of that you can perform the different kind of shape queries right so apart from this, Elasticsearch is uh, horizontal scalable. You just, as your data will grow, just keep adding your node and Elasticsearch will divide your all data across the cluster and you can leverage your full resource, right? So of course, Elasticsearch people are using for a different purpose. Some people are just uh, indicating with the, you know, some of the security agent, they are collecting the data and pushing to the Elasticsearch. Uh, people are using for app application or data and, uh, searches. Let's say you have an application, you just dump your data uh, into Elasticsearch and power your search box uh, by querying on Elasticsearch, right? Uh, so there's a lot of example, let's say if you're using the Tinder, Uber, uh, Wikipedia, kind of these kind of platform they are using, they're heavily dependent on Elasticsearch. So yes, feel free to leverage it. Uh, it's it's way more big, which which I explain you. So if you have any doubts, feel free to uh, comment it out. Right. Uh, on the top of that, whatever the data presented into Elasticsearch, it can be visualized by the tool which is called the Kibana. So Kibana is a visualization tool. Let's say uh, you uh, you want to create a charts, graph, uh, any anything like a map uh, uh, on the basis on the data which is presented into Elasticsearch. You can create it. It's just a drag and drop option, and your dashboard will be get ready. Correct. So yes, Kibana is only work on Elasticsearch, uh, just a one single data source. Uh, but yes, of course, we having a, a multiple connectors available. Let's say a MongoDB, MySQL, uh, Postgres, from X data source, any data source. If you want to pull the data and push it to the Elasticsearch, we have a connectors available. Feel free to leverage it, and from once your data uh, placed into Elasticsearch, you can visualize your data from the Kibana. So it's, it is just a plug-and-play game. It's it's kind of almost no code, right? Uh, okay, in the Elasticsearch, there is a three way you can ingest the data. Like um, there is a there is a specifically, I mean, we having SDKs available. If you are using a Node, uh, Node, PHP, Java, Go, you just name the language. We having SDKs ready, right? Uh, you can use the API, the core APIs. The second is you can be having a web crawler. Uh, so if you are, if you have a website, let's suppose any website, e-commerce or blog or anything, you just feel free to give your endpoint to uh, crawler into Elastic Platform, and the crawler will get start. It will go to the, your domain. It will start, you know, uh, scrapping your all the data, and it will store into Elasticsearch. On the top of that, you can build your search functionality for your website, respective website. So feel free to leverage that, right? Uh, there is a connectors. Third, there is a connectors available. Of course, you can use the multiple connectors to push the data from the different sources. I'll give you the example. So now there is a third component, which is called the integration. So integration is a collection of, uh, let's say, a different tools, different libraries. Let's say the, it is a uh, the log stash, the beats, uh, maybe the different kind of connector people uh, the people have written, people the community have contributed. So suppose uh, uh, you want to monitor your uh, network, 
right? So uh, you can use the packet bead, right? Uh, you can use the packet bead and feel free to install it and the ready-made dashboard will be available on the Kibana. You, you even don't need to create a dashboard. So just uh, give the uh, Elasticsearch endpoint to that particular bead. It will start collecting the data from your host machine and it will start pushing to the Elasticsearch. And from the Kibana dashboard, you can have a visualize. Similarly, if you have um, the metrics, uh, metric, uh, want to uh, monitor your system host metrics, feel free to leverage the metric bead. Uh, we having a log test. Log test is the ETL tool. So if you want to do the data transformation on fly, leverage uh, log stash. Uh, ELK is the very famous use case for uh, Elastic. So if you want to build a centralized logging system, right, where let's suppose you have a hundred of nodes and every node's having a 10 pods or let's say a Docker containers are running and every containers, containers are generating their own logs, correct? And uh, you want to collect the all logs into the central place. So what you will, what you can do, either you can uh, indicate the file bit. Okay, the file bit is uh, um, it, it's going to read the file log file into real time. So just point your all logs, just just mention the all log file path and mention the Elasticsearch URL. File bit will start. It will start collecting the data, reading the data into real time. And it will uh, start pushing to data to the elastic search. And from the Kibana, your dashboard will be ready. Correct. Similarly, let's say, uh, uh, so this is a very pretty simple. You can use this integration part. Okay. Now, this the, this three major component is the ELK, uh, I mean, ELK of course, but the elastic stack, right? Uh, these are the so these are the free, these are the community edition is free. Feel free to leverage, download, and install. On the top of it, Elastic comes with the three major solutions, let's say uh, enterprise search, observability, and security. So when, when you say the enterprise search, if you have a data ready on a JSON, you just feel to dump it and your UI will be ready. And you will get the control plane where you can actually tune your search, how much your boost, how, how your boost should be work. Uh, how or tightly uh, search query should be matched, you know, kind of this, of course. And uh, on the observability, let's say if you want, if you want to monitor your infra, your system, your um, your API endpoint, your code, anything, any kind of the monitoring you want, uh, the Elastic observability gives. And it is also the free. You can get started with the day one on your local system, right? So Elastic observability in in I think uh, in, let's suppose I'll give you the example. If you have an Nginx or Apache, these kind of the web servers are running and you want to monitor it, just install the file bit, uh, enable the particular plugin, okay? Nginx plugin or Apache plugin module. And uh, it will start collecting the data from their logs and your uh, ready-made dashboard will be available on the Kibana. You don't even need to create it, right? In in a 90%, uh, in a 90% your use case, the dashboard will be ready, whether it's a MySQL monitoring, MongoDB, or infra, uh, just you name it, we have observability solution is ready, right? Similarly, we having a security with, uh, where, uh, uh, let's say, you, you want to do the uh, SIEM, SIEM, uh, SIEM and the threat detection, malware detection, probably um, endpoint security, uh, Elastic does have the that, that solution and feel free to leverage, right? So this is a quick introduction. I'm happy to take a more question on this, right? Uh, if, if you want to get the visibility on, on a specific component, feel free to comment it out. Uh, yes, so Elasticsearch is the backbone of this everything, right? Every, every, uh, the whole stack. So Elasticsearch is, is written on a Lucene and uh, it, it working on a BM25 algorithm, right? Uh, so it's give the full text search capability. Oh, it's, it's mostly the keyword matching. So whatever the uh, keyword you're going to search, it's going to match with the specific algorithm, uh, how, how many frequency it's coming and how, how well it's matching. And accordingly, it's going to give documents. So let, let me sh show first how the, how the query works into the Elasticsearch. So suppose you have given uh, the data, these are not the droids you are looking for. This is, this is a sentence, uh, this is a report you want to insert into Elasticsearch. And I have, of course, I have given this some of the, you know, the configurations like a character filter, tokenizer and filter kind of this. So how Elasticsearch is going to uh, store this particular uh, document behind the scene, right? 
So first of all, Elasticsearch is going to break this whole record. And uh, it's going to break the record into tokens. So it has created three tokens, a droid, you, look. So because if you uh, notice, it has eliminated this HTML element, okay. Uh, on the other hand, it also have removed this stop words, uh, let's say the stop words like uh, the, uh, so where, right? So this, these kind of those, uh, words has been eliminated because we have added the soft filters, right? And the HTML strip is eliminating this HTML element. So basically this is a, uh, uh, this is a kind of data, data sanitation, you can say, or data cleaning of uh, Elasticsearch does on uh, uh, its label, right? You don't need to write a code for it, correct? So you can do, because no one is going to search on the HTML element, right? It's a very rare case, of course, but uh, yeah, in a general case, it's a very um, uh, it's very low possibility someone is going to search on a the uh, or HTML element kind of this. So, but of course, you can modify this according to your use case. So, Elastic Search is going to divide your whole record into these three tokens. Correct, uh, Droid, you look correct. Now, these tokens are going to store into the inverted index. So, so I'll give you the example. So there's a three record, winter is coming, ours is the duty and the, the choice is yours. So what Elasticsearch is going to do the, on the first record, it's going to create a token, winter is coming, right? So now winter is has been come here, right? Term. And this particular term is going to map with the document ID. So here document ID is one. So in Elasticsearch, everything is a document, right? It, everything is a JSON. If there is a no row column kind of structure. So uh, every record we say a document, right? So here the document ID is one and uh, here winter is coming in a document, document ID one. Uh, the is coming in a document ID two and three, both. So this is how your, the Elasticsearch is maintaining the inverted index. Now let's suppose the, qu the query, your end user has queried on, by typing fury. It, uh, he or she is searching on a Fury, right? Um, so Fury will, uh, Elasticsearch will take as a query and it, it's first going to search on this inverted index, Fury, right? Uh, the Fury is here and the respective document ID is two. The Fury is, is coming in a document ID two. It will get the mapping and it will fetch that particular document and it will show it to you. So that's why that's what uh, make Elasticsearch faster because of the inverted index, right? Uh, so this is this is totally uh, behind the scene. You don't need to worry about it. It is all is handled by the Elasticsearch. Right? So it's it's basically a traditional keyword matching. We we can say this is a lexical match or classical match. Nowadays, how things are working on the internet, correct? So okay, now Elasticsearch is also give the semantic search. So semantic search is, of course, it's, it's not a keyword matching, but of course it is a matching of that particular meaning of that particular keyword as well, right? So, uh, you know, sometimes it's happening, uh, you have to find uh, certain uh, certain things on a, on a Google or, or somewhere else, and you don't know exact context or exact keyword around that. So you start typing the keyword around that context and you will get your desired result, correct? Uh, so that is that is called a semantic search, right? You, so let's see how how this works, right? So uh, firstly, we saw the elastic search. Of course, it's you know for search, elastic search. Now, elastic search is comes with the vector search also, right? So we will see what is a vector search. What is so before that? Let's see what is a vector, correct? What uh, it, if you are from AI ML background, correct and um, or you are a data engineer, apparently. you you must be knowing what is a vector. But to be honest, I'm not a data engineer, so just just uh, I'm, I'll give you the quick overview. Okay, so the vector is a nothing but a series of the numbers or a floats, right? Whatever the text you are giving, not just a text, the image, the anything, right? You give the input, and uh, you, it, the the vector is nothing but the numerical representation of your data. Correct. So similarly, if you have a, these are the not the droids you look for, right? So these are the numerical representation. Sometimes it's, it, it could be the decimal, it could be the float. It's it's a depend, and it's depend on what I'll, I'm I'll going to tell you on the next slide, right? So the vectors are the numerical representation of your data, right? So 
but it, it is not just working with the text. You can convert any data. So when I say any data, whether it's a text, image, audio, video, you can convert all these data into the numbers, into which we call the vectors, right? And also we call the embeddings. So vector embeddings, you can definitely convert these kind of the data types, audio, text, video, and uh, of course, images into the numbers, right? So, okay, now we, we know our data is a numerical representation, but how this, how this actually uh, sit on the disk, okay? So whenever uh, this vectors is getting saved, how, how, they, how they are saved, right? So, uh, okay, this is a, just an example. On my left hand side, there is a left hand side on this coordinates. It's a mammal, and here it's a bird, right? And their respective cartoon on the right hand side, correct? So, uh, when uh, if if we see our birds, right? Our birds. Uh, now you can consider this cartoon as a vector. Okay, just just think about it as a vector. It, it is a one of the number, uh, and, and it is a, because your vector with the same property is going to uh, is going to group together okay it's, it's going it's going to fall in the same group so in a bird in this case all birds are sitting next to each other right uh, similarly the mammal is going to say, uh, sit next to each other so with the same property with the same characteristic data or the vectors is going to group right so i'll give you the example if i say uh, uh, i have a maroon shirt right uh, and it, it and its numerical representation, the vector embedding has generated. And if I say my uh, this is my red shirt. Now red and maroon are very identical, and the respective vectors are going to group. Okay, going to sit in the same group, right? Whereas if I say uh, I have a yellow shirt, where the yellow is a totally different contrast from the red, so it's definitely it's going to come is going to fall in a different group or it will be set far behind from the red and maroon's vectors, correct? So this is how behind the scene it works when, when we talk about, when we save the vectors, right? So now let's suppose you going to query on this, you're going to query on the elk, right? This this particular bird. So you you said uh, in a query, you said, give me the result like this, like, like this elk. So what vector search in usually happen, it's going to search this first vector on, on the same uh, axis, right, coordinates. And here, after that, it's going to fetch the, all the, the, the elements of the same group, you know, around that, on the, on the, the nearest neighbors, which, which we say, we can say, right? So it's going to fetch this everyone. And this is what we call the semantic result it's coming. So uh, if I'll give you the example, probably on an e-commerce website, we, we just type a uh, shoe or probably a blue shirt or white shirt and uh, you start getting the suggestion. Now you assume this is the collection of the shirts, right? And you just hit it on the, give me the white shirt. The white shirt is here. And on the, on, on the same group of the shirt will come as a suggestion, as a semantic result, right? So yes, this is how the vectors actual, you know, uh, they, they, they save, they sit next to each other. Uh, how, and uh, there is, there is an algorithm while, while searching this, I'll show you. So, okay, now we got, this is a data and uh, the vectors is nothing but my numerical uh, representation and how they uh, actually group, how they actually sit next to each other, right? But now the next thing is how you can generate the vectors, correct? So here where the LLM models, models are comes in a picture. So if you might be knowing that any text expansion, uh, text embedding models kind of this, probably the chat GPT, of course, chat GPT, Llama, these kind of the LLMs are available. Uh, you can use the, those as well to generate the vectors. But yes, these are the um, pre-trained models, okay, on a machine learning, on a heavy data set, correct, uh, which you can use uh, to generate the vectors. So these are the some of the lists from the Hugging Face. Uh, Hugging Face is a, just a free, uh, I mean, a repo for the free uh, models you can use. You can just download and you can use in your um, 
in your application. So feel free to leverage this. So suppose uh, there is a name entity recognition, there is a wonderful model, let's say NER. So if you if you have an unlabeled data, so suppose I am giving um, um, Mumbai, Mumbai is the city of uh, India, right? And uh, um, yeah, and Ashish stays in Mumbai. This is your text. So this model, it will automatically label the data in, in your stream. How? So it will say the Mumbai is a location, uh, India is a location, and Ashish is a noun. So it will get automatically labeled, right? So if you have any arbitrary data or you know garbage data and you want to get labeled, feel free to leverage this model. And you, you can use this, all these models in, into Elastic, right? Elastic search while inserting your data on fly, you can create, you can use, you can leverage this model. You can modify your data. You can label your data and on fly, right? So yes, uh, th these are just an example. You can go on Hugging Fest. You can find more uh, according to your use case, correct? Uh, okay. Now uh, these, all the models can be imported on the Elastic, right? On the Elastic Cloud. So right now we just dump the data in how we are using elastic search is we are just, there is an endpoint post, okay. And uh, post API and we just dump our JSON and elastic search stores that JSON into particular index. Now, if you want to leverage this model or you want to generate a vectors or, you know, kind of this, you just import any of this model, whatever you want to use into elastic. Now, while you're giving the post call, okay, insert this JSON into Elastic, you can modify according to your NLP model. You can generate the vectors on fly and Elasticsearch will store that as well with, with your document. So I'll show you how this works, right? So you, uh, so for the importing model, you can use the Eland, correct? Uh, Eland is a library which we are using. You can just uh, upload the model. But okay, now uh, we have seen what is a vector. We have seen how it's uh, how you can create, right? Now, uh, how you can search, correct? So how we can create is like there is a model. You just give your text, image, video, just a path, and it will give you the respective vectors. That it, it is as simple. It's it's not. Uh, you don't have to. I mean, it's a small piece of code you have to write to generate a vector. That's it. So how do you search a vectors? Uh, if, if uh, so, you have now vectors ready. So usually, it's it's uses the nearest neighbor. Uh, we usually say KNN algorithm or knowing your nearest neighbor. So you have an images document and audio, and you have transformed into embedding. So when I say embedding, it's vectors, right? And uh, it, it it has uh, generated the vectors by using LLM application, correct? Now. Uh, the query has came and with the help of the KNN query, you will get the nearest, uh, I mean, what we can say, um, uh, you can get the semantic result, right? You, you you can perform the vector search. I will show you how, right? So this is one of the, uh, this is just a uh, flow, architecture flow, how vector search works. So uh, here, first you have to uh, upload the model and uh, uh, Anyone, uh, when I, whenever anyone is coming on a, uh, they hit the any query on an application, it will query on a data, right? So suppose uh, it has, I'll give you the example. The this particular model we going to generate a vector for that query first, right? It is not just you have to uh, convert your data into the vector while inserting it, but also while searching it. Right? So whatever the keyword you're going to give into the search, you have to convert into the vector first by using the same LLM model and then you have to perform the vector search, right? So here the on fly your uh, query will uh, convert into vector by using the LLM model which you have specified into Elastic. It will query into the indices, okay? It will query on the indices with the help of the KNN query which is called the KNN search knowing, uh, knowing your nearest neighbor and the search result will come on the application logic and it will show on to your end user. So this is a simple flow, but let me uh, let me show you, visualize you how this works, right? So data ingestion and embedding your data. This is just an ingestion part I'm showing you. After that, I'll show you the how the query works. So suppose you have a data and you have inserted post underscore doc, and this is your data description, 
or best selling a uh, price one one eight color blue fabric cotton. At the same time, on the dog underscore dog, the the embedding whatever the machine learning model you have uploaded, the this particular description not description I have specified. Okay, you can specify any of this field which you uh, where you want to generate a vectors. Correct. So I'm just taking the example of a description. So it's going to convert this particular information into vector as well. Okay, so that in on this uh, particular field, I can perform a vector search or semantic search, right? So when when you hit this post document on uh, on fly, it's going to use this machine learning uh, model which you have uploaded and which you and the field which you have specified on your document. It's going to convert into the vectors and now your document is going to looks like this so here is your plain text and in this new new generated field it will be like a vector the vectors which you have generated now vectors vector uh, length or what we say the dimension could be anything mostly uh, like elastic search support the 2048 maximum dimension uh, but every model generate a different kind of dimensions so you have to evaluate it right accordingly Okay, now your vector has been generated. Now, how the search query take place? So now, uh, your user came and they they uh, they type the summer clothes, correct? Now, summer clothes is going to here. You have to uh, give the text in under the text embedding or whatever the LLM model you are using. According to that, you have to specify the model ID first. So as soon as, so as soon as you build, uh, you will upload the LLM model, it will give you the unique ID. Just note down that ID and you have to specify here while searching out, right? And model underscore text, you have to give the exact keyword which your user is trying to search, right? So what it will do, it will going to convert this summer cloud into vector and it's going to perform the vector search, right? On, on fly, you don't need to, uh, you know, you don't need to do the do anything with the coding or something. So here, uh, if you see here, we have this is a KNN query, and here we have specified k is equal to five, right? Which means it's going to give us a top five nearest semantic result of the summer clothes, correct? The summer clothes can be summer can be lit with the warm or can be hot kind of things, right? Clothes, which is related to clothes. So this is the same. Uh, how this is how the semantic, uh, the vector search works. The KNN works, right? So if I go to the previous example, uh, sorry. Here, if I say, uh, if I specify my my k, k the dimension equal to two. So it will give me the result first this and the two nearest neighbors. So these are the two nearest neighbors. And the, the distance is a calculated on a different kind of algorithm, this dot product, a uh, cosine. So you can you can just check on a documentation how those are works, on which specific use case you should use this dot product and a cosine. And uh, accordingly, you can apply it, right? So yes, this is how this works. And uh, Okay, this is for developers. Okay, this is you have you have just uh, made your query and your semantic searches and vector searches start working. But behind the scene, how actually it works? It uses the hierarchical navigable small words. This algorithm, right? Uh, it is it is kind of uh, it is mostly used, uh, you know, kind of, kind of algorithm or let's say a graph. Uh, library in uh, most of the vector DB. So you can just go on this link uh, link and you can check in uh, more detail how actual this looks right and works. So, okay, uh, I think Elasticsearch plus Lucene is a fast progress. Of course, the Elasticsearch is, uh, is, is uh, very frequent committers for Lucene. We are a very heavy, we are heavily contributing to the Lucene. And of course, the, we, uh, we have increased the vector dimension to 2048, correct? Uh, so, okay, there is one more myth. So, uh, like, uh, so people think like oh, the more your uh, LLM generate the dimension, it is, uh, it's going to accurate that more. It's, it's actually, it's a myth. So it is actually depend on, on which 
data it's it, it is trained in you know, how massively it, it's trained so it's it's depend so uh, you, please evaluate your llm model while you're going to, while while you're going to use while you're going to freeze okay you want to use this llm so you have to evaluate according to your use case and then use it it's not like uh, if if my this particular llm is generating the more dimension so it's it's going to be the highly accurate okay so Okay, now we have seen how Elasticsearch, the keyword specific search is working. We have also seen how semantic search is working, right? Now, let's say how the hybrid search, which is a combination of both lexical and uh, semantic or vector search, is a combination of both, uh, how hybrid search is working and when it's going to use it, right? So, okay, this is a hybrid score. So, uh, whenever you hit uh, the query on a on an elastic search elastic search give the result uh, top 10 result and every document is come with a score right so it is a score of how well this particular document is matching with your query so the more high high score uh, your document will have the more high rank on the uh, it will come on the more high rank right so on, on a term-based score, of course, it was generating it. Now for the vector as well, it's, it's, it's going to generate the score, correct? The semantic score and the lexical or keyword-based score. Now you can combine the both and you can do the hybrid scoring as well, correct? So let me show you. This is one of the examples. So this is a, a lexical search where I have given the summer clothes. This is my KNN search. And this is how you can combine both the result, right? So I'll, I'll give you the example. Let's say uh, 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 you have uh, some movie website and I'm searching, uh, let's say, uh, space movie or uh, probably, let's say, um, interstellar, okay? And uh, so when I'm going to search on an interstellar uh, and if I want to do the semantic search, correct? So interstellar is related to the space. So it should show some space movie as well, okay? So with the help of the KNN search, you can achieve that, right? But uh, let's say I'm very, uh, I'm very uh, clear. I want the movie which whose name is uh, Insta, Insta, uh, Interstellar only, right? So at that time, I have to use this lexical match, okay? So it is not like that. You the you should only use the semantic search only or the vector search only you also should have a proper combination okay where the this particular normal search let's say the lexical search and your the knn search both should become both should be combined and it, it should give the combined result correct then it will be more powerful search so yes this is how you also this is one of the example you can just add your add your query like this and you can perform the knn search and vector search on a multi-field right if you have a you have generated a vector on a different multiple fields, you can do the query like this, correct? So, okay, now uh, we have seen this is, so, okay, this is one of the examples. So the, the vector which we have this, right? This is, we call the dense vector, right? This is, a, this is the numbers, the floats you get in. Now, uh, we be having a, our proprietary model as well, which is called the ELSER, and it is a sparse vector, okay? So it's it's going to leverage the same thing. Let's say that it's going to leverage uh, it's, it, the sparse is a, uh, is a different from the dense vector actually. And to be honest, the F sparse is a much faster because into Elasticsearch because it's going to uh, going to store into inverted index uh, the concept which I have explained you in the uh, first or second slides, right? So uh, it, it's going to uh, use the inverted index, and th this is what it makes faster. Right. So uh, the sparse sparse vectors is nothing but uh, the sparse model is nothing but the, you have given uh, some text. Let's say uh, these are not the droids you are looking for. The same text, right? And it's going to that particular elsr, right? The sparse uh, sparse vector model is going to generate the synonyms of this particular line, correct? So droid, you can say it's, it's you can you can relate with the robot space, you know. And it's it's going to generate the synonyms and the token, which we, we can say the vectors as well, vectors for the all the tokens, right? So whenever your user is going to search on a specific thing related to this, your that query will also going to fire on this token field. 
And if any one of these tokens get matched, your document will come. So I'm going to show you a demo on this, how this looks like on Elasticsearch side. Okay, now this is a very interesting question I always uh, get on a community, uh, free versus paid, okay? Uh, and uh, how, what is the, what is the available, uh, uh, what is available in the community edition and the paid one? So uh, KNN with the HNSW, of course, it's available into the free one. Feel free to leverage it. Vector search is there, KNN search is there. Uh, just the thing is you have to generate a vectors first on your end with the help of the programs or some like this with your script. Generate it and store it into the vector field. And you should have, of course, the proper infra, the enough memory, uh, you know, the off heat and everything. You, have, you need to take care of those. Uh, on the other side, on the platinum side, we having uh, everything on flash. So you, you just insert your data as you were doing in the past with the elastic search and just enable the particular model, just import the model and enable, just do the basic configuration one time and your data will convert into vector on fly. So this is coming a platinum, right? So um, yeah, you can use the, any, any of the model, you can import any of the model. Uh, also the Elseris comes in a platinum. Elseris our proprietary uh, model, which is uh, trained on a general data set and it works very very good I'll, I'll show you the demo how, how. Uh, okay so let, let me show you first right okay this is a kibana dashboard okay now uh, if you want to get start with the uh, with the uh, elastic instance so you can go simply on azure marketplace and go to the azure marketplace and here you can just search for elastic and uh, should okay it should get the result the elastic cloud just click on it and get it now uh, it will create an elastic instance right similarly you can go on a cloud the cloud.elastic.co and you can just uh, sign up and you can uh, uh, you can get into that we we give the usually the 14 days trial period so feel free to leverage it where the elser and everything is enabled it is a part of it you can do the poc if you want so feel free to leverage it so once you have created your Elastic instance, it will come on this page, which is the Kibana default pages. So now in the menu, you can see there is an analytical part, there's an enterprise search, Azure, observability, security. So these are the big words. Of course, we, I'm not touching today any of these, but yes, we're going to do the vector search, right? So yeah, here, I already get, I already got some data into my indexes. So let me show that data for this first. Okay. So I have, uh, I have inserted some of the news, right? Uh, news, uh, news data, correct? Probably the in shorts. So, okay. Let me just show the title, the headlines. Okay. Now you can, you can see like the competing with the tiger and these are the, some of the news headlines, right? Now, how these looks like in uh, ML Infra, just let me. Sorry. If you see uh, here, this these are the links. So if you can see this, these all are the JSON, right? Now, in this field, ML inference title expanded and the predict value. I have indicated the ELSER model, okay, while inserting the data. And the ELSER model has produced these all the words, the related, relate, related word, relevance word, and the synonyms. Oh, sorry, what? Something is wrong. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, okay, the ELSER has. Uh, Ensign has generated this uh, inference, right? Uh, the the uh, the vectors. Now this is a re related to the this title field. Let me show you. Here is the title, and every uh, the the synonyms of a every token or a vectors of a every words has been generated on this field, right? So we're going to perform the plain text search. Let's say keyword based search on a title. And uh, we're going to perform the vector search, I mean, semantic search on this, uh, this vector, vector fields, right? So let's, let's, let's see how, how this things work. So here 
I'm going to search on title. Uh, this is a lexical search, lexical and keyword based search, right? It's a classical search, how right now uh, things are working. Query and I'm just, in, oh, sorry. Just I'm saying the title Bitcoin, which means to find the title which contains the Bitcoin, right? So I'm going to search on this. So I got the this news, right? Guilty learning 4.5 billion in a Bitcoin. So it's come because there, there is a Bitcoin token is present, right? The term is present. Here is also the Bitcoin falls below 26,000 SpaceX, correct? So now it this is how the lexical keyword based search is working. Now let me search on the semantic, right? I have given the Bitcoin here. I'm giving the model ID, the Elson model run, which I have shown you on my slide. And now I'm going to search on this, on the same data set, right? On the same index. So you can see the same index. Uh, here is the same index, right? So search. Now, the if you see the result, the Bitcoin was, okay, this is some more of the SpaceX. Uh, these are more of the crypto frauds. So Bitcoin is automatically tagged with the crypto or uh, uh, the this particular model has related the Bitcoin with the crypto. So you can say, you can see the crypto pawns is scam and the crypto stolen by hackers, these kind of, though. you know, now it, it's give you the more context, the more semantic as well. This is the power of semantic search, right? So similarly, let, let me, uh, let me uh, search on uh, share market news, right? Uh, okay, now I got the result, which is very unrelevant. Short English news. This is some kind of the headlines, or it is kind of the HTML headers. It seems like, but now let me search the same thing on my semantic results. Now you will get it. The Zomato share crosses 100 marks for the first time in 18 months, right? The Rani Group's market cap hit six month high. Shares of the Vietnam win fast rise uh, 109 percent. So this is how the Paytm shares. You you now you're getting the proper result, right? With the help of the semant semantic list. Okay. Now every time you're doing the semantic, or uh, now you you must be uh, thinking like semantic is a more powerful than the lexical search, correct? So it's not that you need a both combination of a both result and it will become the more powerful. So let me show you if I do the this things. This is the hybrid search, right? I'm going to search on a Bitcoin. Here is also Bitcoin. Okay, this is a semantic context, the vector search I'm doing. And this is the lexical search and I have combined into the one query. Now, let me hit this. So here uh, I'm getting these are the result, which is actually Bitcoin and Bitcoin. This is a, comes from the keyword lexical search, right? And this is more of the semantic. But if I want to, you know, um, if I want to change my ranking, I want the result which is coming from the semantic search. It should come more higher. I mean, upper. So just you can play with the boost as well. So I'm just going to increase the boost of this and decrease. Probably you can decrease or you cannot. It's okay if you don't specify, that is also okay. Uh, sorry, uh, just a minute. Okay, you got, you got the result again, but let me take more relevant example so that we, we get okay. market news. I'm just taking the same one. So, here I have given the boost 0.4. Now my semantic result is coming up. Now let's let's give the boost to this. Let's say a 0 0.4, and I'm simply decreasing this. Now my ranking has been changed. Correct. Now simply remove this. Sorry. I'm sorry, I think I should remove this. So I'm getting now my, again, ranking has been changed. So you can you can uh, change your ranking uh, with the help of the boost. Uh, you can prioritize your result. You can, you can re-rank your result, okay? 
accordingly and you can play around this so but you you got the idea how semantic search and the uh, the semantic vector these kind of the, both are the similar search right so how these are works and um, and how they are different from the traditional keyword based searching right so okay now uh, this is a conclusion if I, uh, like if we if i would like to conclude uh, please use the the i mean the hybrid scoring of course uh, dense vector embeddings you can use this you can on, on the top of it there is a, a ranking feature called uh, the rrf res reciprocal uh, rank feature right fusion so you can use those with the semantic as well and you can use the lsert anytime correct so it's it's uh, i mean if i do the conclude so it's not a traditional search it's not a keyword based search it is uh, it is searching not just the word but the meaning of that particular word right so feel free to use this vector search and you can use use the both the hybrid one uh, with the help of the bm25 vector database the elastic is elastic search is the vector database so facets you can create if you are you know e-commerce or domain you can create the facets uh, with the, on the semantic search as well so just feel free to uh, create it. Uh, you can use the OpenAI integration, Azure OpenAI. You can you can just power your context with the help of the Elasticsearch, and uh, you can you can narrow down your context uh, with the help of the Elasticsearch, and then you can hit your LLM, probably the Chat GPT and Open Azure AI. Uh, probably I can I can take this in the next session, but yeah, feel free to le leverage this hybrid search RLF. Uh, facets the linear combination the both the query which i shown you and yeah this is the resources you can just go through you if you want to get started with the generative ai with the elastic these are the uh, good starting point you can go and you can check how else works the workshop the workshop uh, the generative ai blocks we having a different use case so if you are um, planning to do the audio search the video search right the image search so everything is a possible with, with the help of the vector search. So feel free to leverage this, right? Uh, and yeah, that's it for the day, folks. Uh, Elasticsearch, you know for a search, right? Thanks a lot. I'm open for a question. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, so, so, okay. Are vector generated for each word for each document in the Elastic Index? Uh, hey Vikas, yes. Uh, if you are uh, if you are using uh, for uh, if you are talking about the elser, yes. Uh, so you have to specify for in a, in a particular document for which field you want to generate it. So in my case, I generated for the title field. You can generate it. You can give for the all field. Of course, you have to mention. You have to configure that. Uh, is there a uh, okay? Is there a restriction on what can be used? If yes, what is the criteria? So when we say the restriction, what I mean, uh, what model can be used? Okay. So what model you can use is, uh, yes, I think we having uh, just a minute, a last day. Just go. I'll... I'll I'll just quickly navigate to you from that just a minute. Yeah, you can go simply natural language uh, and uh, deploy train models, select the train model. You will get the list just a minute. I'm also in your cluster. Uh, there is a list I, in a document. Uh, sorry. I'll, I'll sh probably share with you. You can find out here. I, I just missed that link. Uh, probably. So you will you will get the all all uh, ML model list, which is currently supported, right? You can just in just mostly text embedding text. Uh, everything is related to text, and with generating the vector, it's uh, those are available. Definitely, you can use it. But uh, just a minute. I think you can just go with this and you will get the list. I'm, I'm just uh, confused from this, we very, very, where that particular thing is exactly there is in document. But let me share the separately, of course. Uh, okay. I think 
the next one what one okay is vector storing and searching capability in elastic available in a production version from which version of the elastic is so it is available i think 7.x something kind of series the vector search is there for for a long time into the elastic search uh, so you can leverage it right now the 8.9 is 8.8 8.9 is going on still it's there so you can use it yes can we create a vector for all the fields in a document yes you can create it uh, so uh, on fly uh, if you are talking about the the cloud version of course you have to specify just which field you want to create you want to generate a vector and if you are uh, creating by yourself so just create it and while defining the map mapping for the index you have to define you have to give the type dense vector for that particular field and you have to just insert your vectors in that so yes you can you you can definitely uh, generate the vectors for a different or multiple fields right are there any problem if we create a vectors on the text document data no i think it's it's there's a no i mean text is a very good use case so you you can create a text you can create a images vectors you can create a, a video vector so probably i i'll share you this image search just type image search on elastic and uh, you will find this wonderful blog how you can do the image similarity search so there is a uh, there is a model which a uh, open uh, open uh, ai uh, the clip model basically uh, they having yeah this clip model you can use those to generate a vector for uh, for an image and just insert into the elastic search and you can perform the image search on the top of that so yes you can do it uh, you can do you can do it with the text images video audio we got the audio search as well the if you audio search last week i think we we recently released those blog that blog um yeah you can find you can just check this blog so if you want to search a song by just humming right so you don't know exactly what is the lyrics of that song you just want to humming that particular song so just go to this blog and you can do that as well with the help of vector search so yes you can do that uh yeah i think i'm happy to take more questions but i think yeah we are good so yes we are can, good can can you share the link of the blog i can share it in the chat yeah 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 just a minute so first of all this is machine learning a good starting point so should i uh, directly dump into the comment section it's good or just a minute you I'll can share. Yeah, I'll share it with you. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. And I'm sharing uh, multiple. Okay. Uh, just so that we won't miss it out. Uh, cool. And yeah. Uh, anyways, these are these are the resources. Okay. Let me just copy these resources as well. That is a good starting point. It is. It is all linked. just copy and paste it right so if you want to power your vector search and you want to connect your elastic search with chat gpt uh, llama 2 azure open ai there is a wonderful use case you can just find out elastic search and chat gpt so uh, it, it has given the use case how you can use uh, your private data right your private data with the llm so you can uh, so you guys can explore those as well So yes, and feel free to reach out to me on my social handle if you have any query, any doubt regarding this. I'm happy to help you out. Just folks, final call to ask the questions. Please drop all your questions here. I think you have one question from Vikas. He's asking okay. how vectors, how vector search works on images like signatures. Okay. uh so like signatures so when i say uh, if you have a signatures kind of images so i'll i'll tell you the how. i mean i want uh, mostly i wanted to know what you want to achieve but i uh, let me explain how actually it works so you just get the images or pass it through the particular model it will generate the vectors okay it will store into elastic search now if if you want to search the image like uh, you you do the google images search right you just take a image and you want you want to find the similar image around this so 
pass that particular image again from the same model it will generate the vector and perform the vector search from the vector search it will come uh, it will give you the list top 10 or top 5 list of five images list and uh, the, it will find the similarities and it will just show that image to your user so this is the basic flow how it works so when you say the signature which is containing so you want to match the signature or you want to read the characters i wanted to know that so you you looking for the ocr or kind of this or uh, it it is just you want to find the image or signature related to that so of course that it should work with that so you can give a try this open uh, i mean this image search probably i am going to take uh, in, in our next session maybe in the next meet up uh, the image search yes uh, yeah any else question um, no any other questions please drop in to the chat section final call to ask the questions i think we good we good we good awesome yeah thank Ooh. you ashish thank you so much uh, yeah vikas says just the signature match thanks yeah you can you can achieve with that image search yes i think uh, you can do the small poc i did with the some of the e-commerce product and uh, so it worked well but yes you can give a try with that so of course when we say the vector search so vector searching is uh, another part generating the proper vector is another part so generating a vector is a totally uh, i mean it's a responsibility of that particular llm okay which you are using so you have to evaluate which is the llm is a good which is a good which is a proven uh, generating a good vectors related to images and then generate a vector insert into elastic search and then you can uh, perform the vector search on that probably uh, you can try that blog as well it is just a simple step you can use those and you will get your result you should get that and if you have any uh, problems just feel free to reach out to me yeah. yep so i have dropped in uh, ashish uh, social handle awesome. please do reach out to him over the linkedin for all your Great. questions or any upcoming sessions on elastic with ashish please catch up ashish over the linkedin and thank Great. you thank you for joining us today thank you ashish thank you so Thanks, much for the wonderful was... wonderful learning Yeah, yep. it was always great to be the reactor, whether it's virtual or physical. But yes, I'll try more in-person events and to collaboration with the reactor definitely. Sure, just hope great. to see you again, Ashish. Sure, thank sure. you, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, everyone. Good, good.